Welcome guys to another Ask Zenla. In this workshop, what I want to do is just show you quickly how to use the page builder so you're clear. So the first thing I do is go to the site and then I log into my site, but generally I open a new tab up. So I just copy and paste a new tab into here. And I go and I log in. Go down, go to admin, or go to, oh sorry, I need to log out. Then I'm gonna to go to sign in and I sign in under my credentials. Now once in here, we can go to courses and we can click on the course that you created, go into pages and you can edit these pages in here. Now you can also edit the site pages themselves, yeah, not the courses. So to edit the site pages, we can go to site and go to pages. We can pick the page. They're all quite well named, so you know what they are. Let's go to the home page and click edit. So editing course pages and site pages is done exactly the same way using the page builder inside of Zendler. So to make things clear, what happens is if I mouse over any of these blocks and the blocks are marked in the blue color here, we can put content in here. Now, what you generally have is a row and that is green. You can see that row. And inside here, you can see this is a row, it's green. And then inside the row, we have an element, which is red. Now, sometimes there'll be a kind of mustard color and these are generally dynamic blocks. So dynamic blocks pull content in based on content. For this example, I have all courses so as we have no courses in there, it's not showing anything. But if I have courses in here, it will show dynamically on the page. You can see in here, once I publish that course that I've got, it will appear in here because it's dynamic content, okay? So quickly to how to edit the pages, we have blocks that we can pull out here. Now there's two ways to get to add a new block or a new element and this is via here or via here. So if I go to the blocks, you can see that we also will have a series of ready-made blocks. These are blocks you can just drag in and use as a base. So I have a call to action and I drop this one in here, click it, click and drag it across. You can see that I can drag it into these areas like this. Now I could also do the same with here as well add new block I could go and find another call to action click that and it will appear in here and this gives you a starting place to work with now inside here you can double click in here and change the content and all of these blocks rows and elements have little gear icons they also have a clone so you can duplicate this and you can delete them. If I was to clone this whole row element here, I could click this and you would see it would appear down here. If I want to delete it, I can delete it out like this. Really simple. You can also go into the gear icon for each of these elements here, which are red. You're gonna see a tab will open on the right hand side. So inside here, we have little tabs that we can change the way that it looks. For this, I could set an animation up and you would see it was appear on here. Watch I go through the animations. You'll see what will happen. This is on first page load. Okay, you can also go in here and set spacing, bottom spacing, left, right, also padding, that's inside the element. And these are common pretty much to all of the blocks, elements, and the rows. You can also go ahead and change things like the color, the font size. And you could even change the font type down here as well. To create a brand new block and not work from one of the templates, which you can see I can close these back up. To create a brand new one, you can come in here, hit the block and you can go to empty block. So let's put a three row, a one row, three row column. So I'm gonna add a row and I'm gonna go three and this will appear in here. And this means that inside here, I can now add an element because remember it's blocks, rows, 
elements okay blue green red so if I want to put some text or a heading in here I could click one of the heading types and you can see it's appeared here for speed what I tend to do if it's common to every area I'll just go ahead and clone it and then I use the move and I'll drag it into that element so I can clone this click this element drag it across here now inside here I can also add another element by clicking on the red clicking here and maybe dropping some text in here like this again I could take this and I could clone it three times take this drag it underneath click this one drag this underneath like this I could also add an image in here as well if I wanted to so I could click this block again because I want the image to appear here go in here go to image we can choose one we can upload one from our library or we can choose a ready-made image like this I can duplicate that image out and once again drag and drop it into the position now there's tons more things that you can do using the page builder but these are the basics on how it works once you've finished make sure that you do save your page and you can also click and preview your page so I can click save and preview don't worry about the SEO settings at the moment so now we're going to preview this page and you can see what we have so as well as adding text elements blocks into these pages you can also go and set things like background colors now because I want it applied to the whole block I can come in here hit settings and I can go and choose a background color in here like this okay now what I can also do is I can add an image so I could come in here upload an image or choose an image that's already here now you can see that this image is really hiding the text so I want to put an overlay so I'm going to turn on background overlay and this allows us to put a transparent or semi-transparent overlay over the top we can also adjust this overlay and of course make sure that you save and you preview the page so this is the basics on how to use the page editor page builder inside of Zender both for course pages and site pages